Welcome into Tennessee Titans today. I am Tom Downey. Today's show is all about the five free agent targets suggested by the Tennessean players that the team should consider, even if the headline might have been originally must sign. But we'll break that down, all five players, the pros and cons. Before we get going, we are doing another Titans mailbag here on the channel. So if you want to get your questions answered, it's a pretty straightforward process. Put your questions or ideas you have on the Titans in the comments section, but use hashtag Titans as part of your comment. It makes us a lot, it makes it a lot easier for us to find your questions so we can put them on the show. First player pitched as a Titans free agent target is Will Fuller. Some we have spent a lot of time talking about in the Past. Fuller offers the speed and the vertical that Tennessee doesn't really have right now on this roster. Yes, some of their guys can be vertical threats, but no one offers the blend of deep ability from a skill standpoint and the traits of the speed that Fuller has. The issue is why he's unsigned in almost July now. He can't stay healthy. He's always hurt. There was the off-the-field stuff in Miami this past year. He was injured, and he had a PED suspension in Houston. Here's what Ben, Ar 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 ben Arthur, the author of the, uh, the article for the Tennessee, and that, that one, that's a tough one to say five, five times fast. Uh, Fuller could be a low-risk, high-reward signing for a wide receiver room clouded by uncertainty. Head coach Mike Vrabel, defense coordinator Shane Bowen, and passing game coordinator Tim Kelly all overlapped with Fuller in Houston, so there is familiarity with the former first-round pick. It's a great point by Ben. I would not anticipate 2020 level production out of Will Fuller, where he was in a limited season because of suspension. He was going to be a thousand yard guy, finally leading up to the hype that came with being the first round pick. If I could get 2018 production, though, out of Will Fuller, maybe even 2019, I'd be really happy because I feel confident in the top of this wide receiver depth chart. Robert Woods. Chidlin Burks, once the asthma, conditioning, whatever is actually going on is taken care of, he's going to be good. That's a good one-two punch. Nick Westbrook-Akina, Des Fitzpatrick, Racy McMath, maybe Kyle Phillips becomes a slot sooner than later, but I think he's more of a 2023 impact, less so this year. I don't trust the wide receiver room at this point. This is not the only wide receiver on the list. We'll get to that one later on in today's video, but in general, Will the Titans make a singular free agent signing? This is going to be the pinned comments on today's video, so I want you guys to make your predictions. Y for yes, they will. N for no, they will not. Let's go to the offensive line, first of two on, at that grouping. Daryl Williams of the Buffalo Bills. I think the argument pitched by the Tennessean was pretty sound. In addition to offering some right guard help, he'd be a right tackle, I think, for Tennessee. The Titans are basically banking on Dylan Radens earning the job. Yes, they spent a third-round pick on Nicholas Petit-Friere. I don't think he's ready. So if Radens does not impress in camp in the preseason, it would behoove Tennessee to at least look at other right tackle options because Radens wasn't good his first year. Now, it was his first year. FCS jump to NFL was a massive jump. That's a huge change in competition expectations, strength, speed, all of it. So if you are if you still remain worried about Raidens, I would consider someone like Darrell Williams, if only because he could also offer you some extra depth at guard for this team. Now, Williams last year, well over 1,000 snaps, Ruffalo starting almost even between right tackle, right guard the past two years, but would be a right tackle, like I mentioned, for Tennessee. Not bad. The PFF run grade was not particularly good, although, you know, it's like, Raidens was any better, and the Bills' offense overall struggled to run the football. Can't blame all of that on Williams. Three more names to come. Whether they're on their list, on this list or not, I want to hear from you guys. Who is a free agent that you want to sign? Is it Fuller? Is it Williams? Is it somebody else altogether? Drop a name or names in the comment section of a free agent you want to add. Back-to-back -back Bills on this list. Cole Beasley is next up here. He would be and would only be a slot receiver, which makes it a clear role for him, but also potentially limits the flexibility here. He has been productive in his NFL career in both Dallas and in Buffalo, but he's a slot-only option. There's zero outside wide receiver ability, and if Kyle Phillips makes this team, 
That's the role Cole Beasley would be filling, especially since I want Traylon Burks to get at least some slot receiver reps in year one, just like he did at Arkansas. Here was the pitch from Ben Arthur, pro and con on Cole Beasley. Beasley's an older player. He'll be 33 this year, but he hasn't had fewer than 600 receiving yards in a season since 2017. Adding Beasley would bring off the field questions, though, as he garnered, na garnered national attention last year for his outspoken stance against COVID-19 vaccinations. To be blunt, I don't think that's going to matter anymore. Uh, the NFL's treatment right now of COVID is... It's done. We won. We don't really care. There's not the same level of testing. It's not going to impact players the same way it did last year. So I could absolutely understand why Tennessee might be like, eh, I don't know about that with Cole, but I don't think the actual impact on the team is what it would have been this time last year. So I, I get the, the mention of it. I would honestly not be that concerned about it uh, as it relates specifically to actually playing football. What I would be more worried about is this. Cole Beasley had the same number of catches in 2020 compared to 2021. The result, by the way, in terms of yards, was a drop-off of 274. He was only a short area of the field threat and did not offer you much after the catch. Beasley is on the decline. That's why he's unsigned in June. Now, if you love the Titans, show your support by subscribing. We are 67. That is it. 67 subs away from reaching the 4,000 mark, and I can guarantee you 67 people will click on this video. They love the Titans, and they are not subscribed. If you are one of those 67, let's change it. Hit the big red button and join us for more free videos right here on Tennessee Titans today. Defensive time now. The only defensive player on this list, actually, and it's a corner, Pierre Desir. Fun name to say. I have issues with this one. Uh, the pitch was the, ten the Titans are young at cornerback. They could use a veteran presence. Plus, Caleb Farley might not be healthy, and you want injury insurance. Oh, he also brings special teams value, like he played that big role in Tampa. It's all fair. Here's the problem. I don't know if you really need a veteran presence at corner. Isn't that Buster Screen's job? Isn't his job to be the injury insurance, the veteran presence, and help some on special teams? The... the, the, the argument of the special teams value is noteworthy for Desir, but if everyone's healthy, and I'm going to assume that they are right now, Christian Fulton, Caleb Farley, Elijah Molden, Roger McCreary, Buster Screen, Chris Jackson, that six corner is better than Pierre Desir. Quite simply, of the five guys on this list, by a pretty good margin, Desir is the one I am least interested in. And the core reason? Not that good. Uh, Desir has bounced around the NFL, a true journeyman, Seattle, Tampa, the Jets, the Colts. I think I'm drawing a blank on another team he played for as well. 2020, 2021, 24 games played, not all starts, mind you, but about almost a full season's worth of targets in, his, in the end. A shockingly high completion percentage, 75.6, is some of the higher statistics you'll see for completion percentage. It's unbelievably high. Uh, yards allowed was 816, 600 times. Yes, he also picked off uh, five passes, broke up 12 more, but teams threw a lot at the Sierra, and in almost all cases it was caught or he picked it off or broke it up, which is not how it normally goes. Remember, there are just some incompletions mixed in there. He got beat a lot. I would not trust him out there at corner. The fifth and final name on this list, Eric Flowers, someone we have spent many a show on because I would love to get him in Tennessee. Before we go more in depth on him, of the five guys, who would you sign? Type WF for Will Fuller. Type DW for Daryl Williams. Type CB for Cole Beasley. PD for Pierre Desir. And EF for Eric Flowers. I don't think Flowers is the best player on the free agency market, but we spent enough time on him. We don't have to go too far in depth. I think he would be a starting caliber option at left guard. I think he'd be a low-end starting caliber player, but his play in 2021 is better than what I've seen over the careers of Jamarco Jones and Aaron Brewer. I know Flowers is aging. I know there's the first-round bust attached to his name, but the sack numbers are high because the quarterback was bad in, in Washington. They, they, they took a bunch of sacks that weren't Flowers' fault. That's why the pressures numbers is lower relative to the sacks allowed there. I think Flowers' instant upgrade over Jones and Brewer, and that's okay. 
So I can still keep Jones as my super swing offensive lineman. And Brewer can be my center guard uh, backup as well. So I would sign Flowers right now. And frankly, I think he'd be the left guard starter for Tennessee if they went that route.